Hey, Pepin. Yo, 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 yo. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about well, some of our older episodes. Oh, yeah? Like the one where we talk about the Cinderblock and how I use it to keep my uh, parents out of the room while me and my girlfriend would, like, fuck. Wait, in their room? Well, no, it oh, is We're not room. going over. <laughs> yes, just like that one. I think there was one we had that we were talking about art. Oh, we had a couple like that. But, yeah, uh, what were you thinking exactly? I kind of have a different perspective that I, I'd love to... I'd love to see if you can help me either disassemble or build up. Well, you know, they say art is like perspectives and drawing different figures in certain perspectives. So, hey, let's draw this episode from a different perspective. Nate, we need to talk. I thought for sure you were going to go in a porn <laughs> Like, so, my favorite art is hentai. <laughs> What's that be released? Release that show. <laughs> okay. Welcome back. So glad you guys could join us. I am here once again with my best friend Nathan Pepin. How's it going, Pepin? Yo, yo, doing well. And also, I'm glad that we're finally talking about this because it's been a while since I've thought about it, and it's a very interesting topic because is art hentai, or rather, is hentai? <laughs> Fuck. I fucked it all up. Art is, all art is hentai. <laughs> True. Take two. <laughs> what do you mean take two? This is live, bud. Well, you want to change that lower third while we're at it? Uh, oh, good idea. Is art hentai? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get banned <laughs> from like Facebook. <laughs> What's that? It's like the <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And we're going to get literally banned from Facebook for 30 days. Is hentai art? Yes. It, it's such a great question because it, some some of it's kind of like poorly done, but some of it, did this get the right angles? And also to combine it with a certain soundtrack and things just like... like I don't think that was the total question here today. <laughs> I think the question was, what is art? I mean, I guess that could be a part of the question. Oh. Well. All right. So... Uh, yeah, what's art? Uh, I think that's a great question. Have you now? We we've talked about this before. I think we we talked about this at least once uh, with Chelsea. I think we we brought up something along these lines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's on a previous episode. If people want to check it out. Do you uh, remember any of our opinions at that time? Uh, I get, not really. I remember Chelsea's opinions a little bit, but that was a while ago, to be honest. So I'm not really sure. So what's what's your what's your opinion on this? Uh, I think so, so. I actually wrote a Facebook post about this the other day, and let me oh. see if I can read it. Okay, uh, this is let's great. Pull up that live that content. Place. This is good content pre-written. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I'm totally. Oh, hey, I got one like on it, and the like is from my girlfriend. So that's how we know it's good. Ooh, I didn't like it. <laughs> nope, not at all. Art. Art is the lens under which pointless actions can be justified, not viewed as insane. If someone spends numerous hours playing with eggshells, that person is seen as weird and crazy. If ends up they're spending that time arranging the eggshells into a shape of a chicken, well now, everything makes sense and they are an artist. That's art. Okay, okay so art is a lens. Uh, I no. agree with that. No, no. Uh, art is where you take stupid shit... That makes no sense. And you do something and people don't look at you like, why? Or, that's stupid. They think, ah, oh. that's what it can't is. You th can't you think both? Can't well, you be like, that's really stupid, but it's art. Uh, Yeah, yeah, but it depends on the person. And because, why is it always eggs with you? Well, because I saw this picture on Reddit of this person who take a bunch of eggshells and made it into a chicken. That's smart. It was stupid. The shell becomes the chicken. It's, the it's one like part, the one part of the egg that doesn't become the chicken normally became the chicken this time. That's fucking prolific. Like for, for me, I just started thinking about like, if we were to like abstract, like the end product away from here, this person just spent like hours and hours just playing with chicken shells, like chicken egg mm -hmm. shells. Like I really like that. We call them chicken shells now. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken 
Anyways, let's get on to the subject of eggs because I think we've talked too much about eggs. No, this is very important that that we continue on with this because, like you said, the isn't the fir- the opening to your statement that art is the lens. Mm-hmm. Well, then that you are saying art is a lens. Um, it's a perception. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah, because I don't think art is out there in reality. Rather, it's how you interpret the reality in a sense. All right, and you can usually art tends to be intentional, but you can also have art which is unintentional. Like, if you look at like a super beautiful sunset on a mountaintop, uh, you might say this is like art, right? And you realize there's no intention in there, but that's why you say it's like art because there actually is no intention behind that. Can nature create art? Uh, yeah, it can inspire art. Well, that's very different. Creating and inspiring are very different things. All right, uh, go on. I mean, that's just kind of the statement. Oh, <laughs> Those okay. are different things, demonstrably. Uh, I don't know because I, th- I think inspiration, like, like almost all creation, is created from the the, the inspiration of something. Like, it's very rare that someone comes up with something which is completely unique and out there. I, I do think it can happen to some extent. Like, for instance, people thought of, uh, I don't know, the internet or, like, these crazy aliens things. But a lot of times those different concepts have some sort of basis connected back to something in reality. And maybe it's done over time. Maybe it's, like, very abstract or very high-level, like, uh, sort of things. But, you know, I, I think everything has a basis of reality, and art kind of takes those things and kind of uh, amplifies them. I was talking with my brother Brian about this. Uh, we've had him on the show before. We had him on an, with an episode about dreams once, mm-hmm. um, and and I think one or two others. Um, and we were talking about, like, what what is art, and... I kind of had a shift in in perspective as to what I think art is. I think art is a frame of mind. Okay. I think that anything could be seen as art if you're using the frame of mind, if you're using the perspective of art, artistic in general. And it's more of a spectrum than anything. When you say frame of mind, like, what, what do you mean exactly? Like, is there some sort of mental state? Like, someone's in, like, a yeah. flow state? Yeah. Or they're like, angry? Like, yes. Like, I'm, I am looking for, if you're looking for art, everything is art. Just on a sliding scale, on a spectrum. So there's nothing that isn't art when you're in an artistic frame of mind. Okay. I'm trying to, so, so that's why you like the whole lens thing, because if you look at, if you have the artistic lens out in front, anything could be viewed as art. Yeah. But I I don't know if that answers the question of what is art though. Well, it's the, it's the frame of mind through which you're, you're viewing the world. Okay. So I, I can think of it as like, abstractly like a way to measure if something was art is let's say we had a way of measuring like that art frame of mind in a similar way we can measure like say focus or flow or anger or sadness if we have a way of measuring people's brains that could be an objective way of measuring if something is art or not well there's there is no direct measurement like art art isn't a thing in and of itself Art is, is individualistic based on the person and their their perception of that thing or where it falls on their spectrum of what is or what isn't art. Okay. I'm, tr- I'm trying to, like, understand this, like, m- more more deeply. So mm. can you give me, like, a, an instance or, like, a like a high-level example or, like, a low-level example? Um... Like if you're looking for circles, you can be like, "That's a that's definitely that's a circle right there." Mm-hmm. Uh, but like everything's a circle to a degree. It's just like to what degree is it a circle? Like a square is kind of a circle, but it's more of a circle than a triangle is. And a triangle's more of a circle than a single line from 
on just one axis is, and then that's less of a circle than a dot. Mm -hmm. And art's kind of the same way, where you're like, that's that to to me that is that's art, but it's not like it's less art artistic. It's less art than than something else might be. Where my mind's going with this a little bit is like the platonic ideal of forms or the platonic realm of forms where you have like a perfect sort of idea, like a perfect circle, a perfect square. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also had this idea that to be a perfect human, a perfect chair, a perfect microphone. Yeah. And you have this abstract concept called art, which has this perfect form. And your mind is taking this, say, perfect form of art and it kind of sounds like more like in your idea that you're taking that, like, say, variations of that form or, say, parts of that form and imposing it onto reality. It doesn't sound like you're claiming that it is part of reality, like you're observing that artfulness in the reality. Rather, you're taking your conception of art and imposing it onto the external world. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. It's not art Art in and of itself isn't, isn't a, uh, like, an actual tangible thing it's the it's it's a state of mind it's a it's a, a con it's a concept that can be applied mm -hmm. but it's not in and of itself like this is an art right here this is an art where is the concept coming from your heart your your heart yeah you just know you look at a thing you're like that's an art okay See, I'm having a hard time buying that one. Cause of course you are, because you don't have a heart. Well, that's true. So you're soulless, and you have no, artis <laughs> no artistic flair at all. The, the thing is, though, like, I don't, like, what creates the, the heart, right? Like, there has to be an impetus for something. And I do yeah, believe that soul. we're born with things, right? Yeah. Like, when a baby is born, and you, like, uh, stick out your tongue, the baby's going to mm -hmm. stick out its tongue, because... There's some sort of uh, genetic, psychological predisposition there that's been programmed in. Like if, if a baby pup is born, that pup is going to go seek out the thing that's kind of pointy and kind of pinkish, and it's going to start sucking on it, i.e. the nipple, mm -hmm. because that's what it's kind of programmed to do. So I, I do think we'd have like these internal sort of uh, concepts in our head. But art does seem to be a bit higher level, though. So I am skeptical it could be built in if that's what the claim is. So you don't think a baby knows what art is? No. Is that what you're saying? No, not at all. I, I wouldn't think a baby has any artistic ideas. Of course a baby has artistic ideas. They may have more artistic ideas than you because it hasn't been perversed by the the factory-created world yet. I don't think so because I don't think they have much thoughts in general. Here's like, my statement. All babies are more artistic than Nathan Pepin. <laughs> all baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that may be true. Hashtag all babies. <laughs> but I don't know where the moral, what did I say moral? I don't know where, like, it kind of sounds like, if that's the case, it's kind of like the platonic kind of idea where every baby is born with like a perfect knowledge of everything and then that knowledge gets lost over time because that was essentially Plato's idea with the theory of the forms. Like, everybody mm -hmm. was born say perfect with a in the realm of knowledge they actually existed in that set separate realm before they were born and then as they grow they sent they essentially just lose that perfection yes baby geniuses yep okay i feel like you're trolling me that, here no that's what that movie is about literally <laughs> <laughs> please it just trust me that's what that movie is about and then they get kidnapped and experimented on and then when they turn three and can talk they don't, they lose all of their memories. That would be a perfect sort of plot though. Like you have like, the, like a simple kids movie or like a baby movie and it, it this seems simple, but then you look into it. And it's like about I think a baby, theory of forms. I think a baby drives a bus at one point, but the one thing that they don't lose when transitioning from perfect baby brain to dumb human brain is the, the, their concept of art. Okay. A and why is that? 
because it's pervasive through your soul as a human. That's it's the it's the truest expression of your soul. Okay. Is what what you find artistic is the is your soul being able to be express, expressed and you have put such a such a lead container around your soul nathan that you have no perception of art your only perception of art is that weird little tentacle you let break out of that lead box and that's called hentai mm. i can't kind of see that though because like for instance i, I think on a, a big way art is a way of it, it's like a unintentional maybe intentional it's a sort of synesthesia of the emotions because, like, when you have, like, a certain emotion, like, say, fear, dread, uh, happiness, elatement, Ill- 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 sadness, like, there's these different emotions. And a lot of times what art will do is it takes that form. It, it's like an abstract form which maybe doesn't contain those things naturally and it kind of stimulates that emotional response in you. So, for instance, if you are hearing like a song and you can really connect to it because it's talking about something that's similar to the experience and maybe the music itself is kind of listening sadness that kind of has a sort of synesthetic response and synesthesia being like some people can see colors like they will see what, what, sorry some people can hear like colors like you might hear like a, a note and that note might be blue or some people like when they see like a number like number two they kind of see like that two has a number and sometimes they can do math that way it's kind of weird but in in the same sort of way like uh emotional resonance with art is sort of like a synesthesia experience where that art form is kind of like resonating with in a way that kind of rouses up the emotions and that's kind of like a super like weird way to put it because people say yeah art creates emotions but i think it is kind of like a bit more more than that in that kind of mechanistic way I mean, I think art art evokes emotion, but it also doesn't at the same time. Like something that something that you can't connect with, I think, is as much art as something that you fully connect with. Something that you take what what your expectation is, what you're used to to feeling and thinking, and completely flip it on its head. Um, such as the the eggs as a chicken, like that's the one part that doesn't become a chicken, and then you make it to look like a chicken. That's that's art. It's it's taking your expectations and flipping it on its head, the same way as uh, if you had done it with egg yolks. I think that would be just as as artistic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, for me, like a lot of the art, like for me, like art, art a lot of times has a sort of combination of factors that will self-envelop or they kind of create like a bigger whole like i can think of like certain like artwork where it's trying to convey like a certain sort of emotion like let's say that emotion is like uh you know action or anger or, or whatever right the artist might use certain lines that are more like say straight and kind of like have a certain direction where the directions are just very aggressive and kind of like pointy and everything. And you can kind of create a better sort of artistic for sense of that conveyance through the medium in that way. And I, I think, I think that can be art or it can be a thought because you know, m- maybe kind of the way you put it is it, it makes you kind of think in a different way, kind of perceive what that thing is. Like there's the eggshell, right? Which is, just an eggshell from our own point of view. But then when you kind of put it into a chicken, it kind of reframes the eggshell into something wider or something different than it was normally. I mean, the, the artists themselves have very, have don't have everything to do with the, the art. The artist dies when the art is created and it becomes, uh, and we talked about this with Mason, uh, death of the artist it the art itself becomes something more than the artist and the artist's intentions the artist could have intended for this to evoke anger but it doesn't it invoke it invokes love it invokes something completely different something that has no no connection to what the artist intend originally intended um i, I think that art completely the the artist from the frame from the framework of looking at something as art the artist is irrelevant all right i mean i can kind of see that 
I mean, um, see, I think a lot of art people might disagree with that because a lot of artists, like art historians, they'll like really analyze the author and try to get the idea of like what caused the conception, what their intention was, and then what mm -hmm. they used to kind of create that intention. But I think in like a higher level kind of way of what the art actually is, I, I think I would agree. Like I, I, I could think, hmm? go ahead. Uh, w one reference I might point back to who's always kind of stuck with me is uh, there's the band System of a Down. And they've always been very interesting because they have like these lyrics, which are usually, a lot of the lyrics aren't like that meaningful. It's just kind of random words. Uh, some are about like mental masturbation, to be honest, but uh, literally, but uh, they're, a couple songs where they refuse to give a meaning or like a you know word by word analysis or anything like that because they're like you know people have made the song more than what i could ever think it was right i don't want to say what this is because the moment i say what the song is about now the song stops having that meaning for every person who perceives it a different way you know and i, I think in a way they're trying to keep things that are general so people can map their own meaning onto it but i also think that it is true that the art does become a bit more than it actually is, or it actually was intended for. When you take the, the artist's perspective and their intention into mind, that's fine, but that's not, like that's part of your lens of what the art is. Like you're allowing their in, intention to become a part of the art, mm -hmm. but it's not in and of itself a part of the art. If you separate the two things, like the thing is still artistic based on how I'm perceiving it, regardless of what the artist's intention is. If I choose to let the artist's intention influence that, that's my choice of adding that into how I view it as art. But I don't think it's a necessity. I think people who are, who are looking at Van Gogh and saying he did this brushstroke for this reason and it has this intention and it evokes this emotion, like that's true of them and that may have been true of the artist but that's not necessarily true of the art itself because the art as it is not the physical thing you're looking at. The art is what's happening within you um, based on, on your own perception of what you're seeing. So in that sort of way, if I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to like recapitulate that. So mm -hmm. tell me if I'm off base with this, but yeah. So let's say that we're looking out into the world and we see, I let's take this. So this is a, a mouse right here. Uh, not, not like a live mouse, but a computer mouse for those listening. So we have a computer mouse right here. And I can look at this. You can look at that. Other people can look at that. And there's, unless a person is blind or has bad vision, everyone can say this is a computer mouse, right? So there's that one-to-one mm -hmm. -one mapping. Something which is artistic has the attribute on it where I can look at this mouse or let's say it's a painting. So I can look at this painting. You can look at a painting. This other person can look at it. Many people can look at it and we all see the same stimuli, but we all see different things or we all perceive something different from it. And that difference, that kind of perceptual ambiguity imbued in that object, I mean, not imbued, but kind of perceived in that object or sensed from the object is kind of art in itself. Yes, but one step further. We can identify that thing as physically as a mouse in its utilitarian point of view. But when you're taking the perspective of art, which is what art is, is the perspective, I can still look at that mouse and say, you know, it has these curves, it has, uh, you know, these specific um, colors. And to me, it evokes these emotions, it evokes uh, these other things that connect to it. Um, you know, I see that as, as being a, a very uh, strong feminine figure. Um, and it has, it has a lot of like, uh, warmth to it and somebody else could be looking at it and think something different. And the person who originally created it could have been trying to, to evoke feelings of masculinity and what they were trying to evoke and what I'm perceiving it as are completely separate and both are completely valid because that's what art is, is being able to put on the perspective of art and say, what is this thing giving me for uh, stimuli that turns it into emotions and, and connections and, and something bigger than that's a mouse? It's what's, what's the step above that's a mouse to me personally. 
And that's what art is, is that perspective of that's art because this is how it makes me makes me think, feel, et cetera. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how it makes me think. And I think I'm gonna have to take a while to think about this, like maybe a week because, uh, yeah, I need to go to bed and the editing is taking too long and this is in post. I've used this joke a million times, but how am someone supposed to end this? So, Hey guys, guess what? Next time on, we need to talk. We do. Wait, I said, we need to talk with the end. We need to talk. Shit.